Hello, Michelle here with From Surviving to Thriving. Today I want to talk about three powerful ways you can stop absorbing other people's energy. Now obviously a lot of you are probably thinking, well go no contact, problem solved. Well in a lot of cases, yes, that's definitely the best way to stop absorbing other people's energy. However, we cannot live in a narc free bubble for our whole lives because there are going to be times where we're going to be around narcissistic people and we don't have a choice. They could be a boss, a coworker, a neighbor, a teacher in our child's school, the spouse of a friend, someone that we see at family gatherings. So obviously there are times where we're not going to have a choice to go completely no contact. And that's when these powerful tips are, are most helpful. The first tip is to recognize the fact that you cannot please everyone. You can try your best to be the person that the whole entire world likes, but you will fail if that's your goal. The most perfect, the only perfect person that ever walked this earth couldn't even achieve something like that. So recognize that no matter what you do, there are people that you're not going to be able to please. This helps so much in not absorbing other people's energy because when you're stuck in that thought that you have to have everyone's approval, you soak up their energy. So you're with somebody, you, you go into work and somebody's really high and they're really happy and all of a sudden, zoom, you're really high, you're happy, you're soaking up their energy. Then you're around somebody that's really narcissistic and just really slams people down and boom, you're, you're down and you're basically at the mercy of whoever you're around. You soak up whoever you're with and the reason, a lot of the times, the reason for that is because you're doing so in a desire to be liked. You're, without realizing it, we mirror people because we're trying to create that common ground. We're trying to show them, hey, look, I'm like you. So, you know, you should like me because you like you and therefore, you know, look at how we're connecting. A lot of times that's what we do or that's why we do it, right? Again, the problem with that is when we do that, we put ourselves at the mercy of what other people feel. And on top of that, we wind up feeling negative because deep down, we know that we're not being true to ourselves. We know that when we go into that group and that group has this kind of atmosphere and we completely adapt to that atmosphere, whether it's really who we are or not, inside we're condemning ourselves but because we're saying why did you act like that that's not you that's not who you are they don't even know who you are because you're only showing them who they are or what you think they want you to see and that all stems from thinking that you have to have everyone like you the second you can realize that you are valuable you are worthy you are enough just because you're you the second you can realize that you don't have to prove that truth to everyone around you because you're so thoroughly convinced of it, you're aware of it, you know it's true, you don't need everyone else to, to give their confirmation that, oh yeah, that is true, oh yeah, you do have value. No, because you know it yourself. When you are at that place, it's very powerful because you stop, like I said, it keeps you from absorbing other people's energy from being a chameleon to a degree having a chameleon like personality can be nice because you can identify with many different types of personalities but if you have no control over it and you just morph into acting like everyone who you're with at that moment then you're never really you and does anyone ever really know you so I know with a lot of the people that I do face-to-face -face coaching with, one of the most common things that we all work on is learning how to show up as ourselves. Learning that I'm going to be myself in this situation, whether they like me or not, I'm going to be true to myself. And when we do that, we stop absorbing other people's energy. It's very powerful. The second tip is stop letting emotional vampires steal your thoughts, okay? How does that happen? Well, what we focus on grows. And if we're in a relationship or better yet, if we're at a job, at a place of employment or at a community function, at a parent-teacher conference, 
any kind of event where we're regularly around somebody that's an emotional vampire, what happens is they wind up making the other people or you or me walk on eggshells. Okay, so they'll get mad at something you do that makes no sense. Like it doesn't even, it, there's no logical sense for them to be upset, but they're super upset, right? And then at another time, they're not upset about that same exact thing. And now they're upset about something totally different. This causes a person that's around someone like that. Again, this could be a coworker. It could be an extended family member. It could be someone you, you have to be around for whatever reason on a regular basis, okay? That causes a person to ruminate all the time. So they were mad at something that doesn't make sense and you spend like the next week until you are around them again thinking, what did I do? What did I say? Why would they get mad at that? Does that make sense that they're mad? Am I being too too sensitive? Maybe they're right. What should I have done? And all of your thoughts are on that, okay? Or the rest of the time, as you're getting closer to that regular event where you have to be around this person, now you're thinking, okay, what if I do this? What if I say this? They're gonna do that and they're gonna do this and, and this is gonna happen and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> In other words, you're stuck up here in your thoughts, completely obsessing about this emotional vampire, and they are stealing your thoughts because if you're focusing on that, you're not able to focus on things that are, are important like you. You're not able to focus on your feelings, on what you're going through throughout the day. You're an autopilot doing whatever you need to do throughout the day while your mind is obsessing about what happened or what might happen in the future, okay? So how do you stop allowing them to steal your thoughts? Like I mentioned before, one of the ways is to quote Ralph Smart in one of the videos that I saw of his, he said, you have to pay attention to what you pay attention to, okay? So let's just say you are at work with somebody that's an emotional vampire that is constantly getting mad at things that don't make sense, constantly causing drama and chaos, okay? So you're writing a report and you know that this person is always criticizing how your whatever you put on the paper, how your delivery to other people, they're constantly criticizing you. Well, you notice those thoughts. You notice that you're thinking about that person and you recognize it and say, well, let me focus on the moment. I'm writing this paper, what do I think about this paper? What do I think about this project? How do I feel about it? And you bring your attention back to you. This is a skill that takes time, especially if we've lived a life where we've been in autopilot for a long time, where we're going about our life, we make our coffee, we'd get ready for the day and we do this, but we're never present with what we're doing at the moment. Our mind is always on what's gonna happen, what didn't happen, why did it happen? If you've always been like that, it takes practice to bring your mind back to where you are at the moment. But the more you put it into practice, the more you begin to take control of your thoughts, the more you don't allow other people to occupy so much of your mind to steal your thoughts and you're able to, to enjoy every moment of your life better because you're actually being present for them. You're showing up for them instead of allowing your mind to be somewhere else while you're living your life, okay? It's a skill that takes practice, it takes time. Some things that, you, that can help you when you're at the beginning stages of this is if you have a rubber band around your wrist, anytime you notice your thoughts are ruminating or your thoughts are obsessing about something else or they're not, you're not being present in the moment, just lightly flick that rubber band as a way to remind yourself where you're at. Now, once you flick that rubber band, take a moment to ask yourself some things like, what am I feeling right now? What do I think about this paper that I'm writing? How do I feel about what I'm doing? Focus on yourself, give yourself credit. I'm feel, you know, notice you're present, I'm, I'm present in this moment, it feels so good. I'm having a cup of coffee, wow. I've had cups of coffee and I've downed them without even thinking twice. It's like reading a book and then you realize at the end of the page your eyes have hit every word and you don't remember a word you've done because your mind was someplace else. Get, wow, I'm actually enjoying this cup of coffee. I'm actually reading this and I'm present at this moment. Give yourself that credit because what happens is your mind will then be conditioned to stop ruminating, to stop leaving 
and be reminded that it feels good. It's a positive thing to be mindful. The third tip to help you to stop absorbing other people's energy is to make sure you're giving yourself time, you're scheduling time to do things that help you to refocus. Everyone has their own passions. Everyone has something that makes them feel good at that moment, that ha where they're centered, they're completely centered, and they're enjoying what they're doing. My passion is painting. My passion is writing. When I do those things, I'm there in the moment and it feels awesome. I also love going to the beach, taking time for nature. That is an amazing thing. If you can take time to schedule walks where you're outside, where you're not thinking about what other people think, what other people feel, how other people are angry at you, you're just enjoying the moment. It's very replenishing for the soul. Taking time to meditate. And when I mean taking time to meditate, learning how to just sit with your thoughts, not controlling them, but just learning how to sit and notice your thoughts and then bring yourself back, pay, paying attention to your breathing. You hear your thoughts, they distract you, and then you focus on your breathing again. When you do that, it helps you to separate from your thoughts. You realize that you are not your thoughts. So if any of those thoughts are because of other people, you realize it's not you. It separates you from other people's energy and it really helps you to stay focused and centered. Those three tips are really powerful if you find yourself in situations where you can't, you know, you, we can't live in a narc-free world. <laughs> It'd be wonderful if we could, but at this moment we can't. But we can learn tools that can help us so that even though we're around people that have negative energy, we learn how to not absorb it and how to not allow their, their negative energy to rob us of our joy.